Hello and welcome to July's book review and to the first of the every other Wednesday videos. July was a good month for reading. We managed to read four books this month. Um, I did go on like a little mini holiday thing so that's part of the reason why I read so much more. Well not so much more, a little bit more. And also one of the books I read was very, very thin. And I read it in like one or two sittings, pretty much. Maybe three. So we've got a few bits to cover, so we might as well get right into it. The first book I read was Never Greener by Ruth Jones. And I don't normally do this, but I did basically pick this book because it's written by one of the writers of Gavin and Stacey, which is probably my favourite TV show ever. So I was more influenced by the author than the subject of the book. But to be fair, it was it's my kind of book. It's a uh, women's fiction, I think they call it, kind of thing. It's about a young woman called Kate who falls in love with an older married man and then their lives obviously move apart. And then 17 years later, they bump back into each other and it's what happens with that. Now I found Kate, the main female character, just really irritating. I felt sorry for her husband, I felt sorry for Callum who's the older guy that she was in love with, I feel sorry for his wife, I feel sorry for Callum but at no point do I ever have any sympathy for Kate. I just think she's a selfish, selfish woman. Now I don't know if that's what Ruth Jones is going for. I imagine she wants you to feel something for the character because she does have her own issues with food and mental health and stuff like that. But at no point do I ever feel anything other than annoyance and irritation to Kate, which is quite hard when that's your main character. I thought, you know, towards the end of the book I'd it would come full circle and I'd understand her more and I'd feel for her more, but no, I just don't ever, ever have any any of that kind of emotion for her. The story does jump forwards and back in time a little bit, which on the whole is good, it makes sense, it it doesn't detract or add really anything to it in my opinion. Um, there was the odd time that it was a little bit confusing, but that's just because I didn't pay attention when I was reading it. That's my fault, not Ruth Jones's, but it does jump a bit. One of the characters actually goes to university in Coventry, or Warwick University, which is, um, like the name suggests, is in Coventry. And I lived there for a period of time, so I know all about it. They talk about uh, the Warwick Arts Centre and performing in it which I've also done and stuff like that so it's quite nice to reminisce about those little bits of information but that's a very very small minority of of the book I mean they're not in Coventry for very long maybe like two chapters or something but yeah I think I preferred some of the subplots to the main plot but again, that's probably because I didn't like the main character. So all in all, Ruth Jones Never Greener, I thought was just sort of meh. It's reasonably well written. It's the, the plot of it is, you know, interesting enough. It, I did want to follow it through and see how it all concluded, but basically because I didn't like the character it sort of made the book not as good for me but I'm probably in the minority and finding Kate very irritating so you might really enjoy it but there you go that's Never Greener by Ruth Jones. So the second book I read was The List of My Desires and I'm gonna have to turn it around for this by Gregory Delacourt. So I like the concept of this book because it's about a middle-aged woman, she wins a lot of money on the Euro Millions but then starts to think about the things that she wants or desires and how that kind of money would impact on her life and things 
things like that, which I thought was interesting. Because everybody has that fantasy plan of what they would do if they won loads of money on the lottery. Everyone's had that chat. My dad certainly has done that chat countless times. I think that's how he falls asleep as he works out how he'd spend his millions when he won the lottery. But if you actually want it, would you do those things? Would the money change your life loads in terms of like for the better or would it be a real hindrance and stuff like that? And I think this book explored that really well. But it is a translation, so this is originally in French. So I'm wondering whether some of the essence of this book has been lost because it's a translation. And there's certainly some of the popular culture references that I didn't get because I, I don't know them. It feels very floaty in parts. It doesn't feel particularly developed. And again, I didn't particularly connect with the main character. Jocelyn. Like, I was interested in what she wanted to do with the money, but not enough to care, really. Yeah, again, I, I, again, I don't know whether it's because it's a translation and that's why it lost some of its heart, but I wasn't a huge fan of this one, to be quite honest. But it was short, it was very easy to read. One of the things she wanted was like a frying pan. I was like, come on, think bigger. It It is interesting to think about how money would change your life. If you're happy with your life as it is, would you actually want that kind of money? Anyway, so just a little short one for List of My Desires by Gregory Delacourt. But as I said, not, not my fave. The next two books are the ones I read while I was in Lincolnshire with my family. So I don't actually have the copies with me to show um, because the first one is a book I own but I have lent it to my mum. Does anyone else's family do that? Because I came back with a whole... You might be able to see. So there's two piles here. Most of those books from my mum couple from my brother but does anyone else's family do that just sort of share books around because I certainly went with my little pile to give to my brother and my mum for them to read anyway uh, but yeah so it means that she's got that one now to read and then the second one my brother had lent me but I read it while I was there so I've given it back so I don't have the physical copies but we'll put a little image somewhere so you know what I'm talking about so the third book here, yeah, we're on the third book but the first book that I don't have. Um, so the third book is called Two Steps Forward and it's by, uh, I struggle how to pronounce the name, it's Graham Simshon? Simshon. He actually wrote, oh let's get it. he actually wrote all the Rosie Project ones, so it's that guy. He wrote Two Steps Forward with um, a lady called Anne Boist. We'll go with Boist. I think that's how we're going to pronounce it. Um, and it follows two people, Zoe and Martin, as they do the Camino trail thinging of Bob. They start in France and then they work their way to Santa. The end of that trail. I can't remember the name of the church that's in Spain. It's very famous and it's not the Sagrada Familia, which is the one that is prominently in my brain and I can't get the, that one out to get the right name. But Google it and it will tell you what it is. Obviously, as you can tell, I don't know a lot about the Camino Trail. I'm probably not even pronouncing it right. But I thought, on hindsight, that the topic is probably quite monotonous. It's essentially lengthy lengthy walks every day so they get up they walk they go to bed and how do you get an interesting novel out of that kind of thing but i thought they did it very well uh, they certainly built a lot of relationships into that they meet the same people in each stop um, and obviously martin and zoe have a, you know, a relationship of some description um, and I actually thought when I read the blurb that Martin and Zoe 
would be walking together so I thought it would be a lot about their chats and things like that particularly as they're leaving from the same place but it's not they don't walk together very often and I think it's probably well it's definitely better that way Martin is quite a hard-headed and yeah he has like one focus and that's all that he can think of and the Camino trail is supposed to change you and for a big chunk of it he doesn't seem very open to that because he's just got the one thing that he's thinking about um, whereas Zoe is very floaty she very much believes in fate and if that's been presented to me then that's fate so I better do it kind of thing so very two very different people uh, doing the same walk so it's interesting to see their different experiences through the eyes of those different kind of characteristics. The trail is a pilgrimage, it ends in a church and I wondered how many people these days would actually be doing it as a religious pilgrimage or would it be a challenge, a walking holiday challenge thing? How many people actually do this on religious grounds these days. Certainly the two in the book, the two main characters in the book were not doing it for religious reasons. Um, they both had things at home that they were trying to avoid basically. Um, and then obviously endless hours of walking by yourself every day means that you have to, or it inevitably comes out that you start thinking about it and have to face whatever it was that you were avoiding in the first place. As I said, I liked, I did, this book was good, I liked it quite a lot. Um, it's certainly one of the better ones I read this month and I did actually connect with the two characters but mainly I liked it for the other people that they met. So there was a group of Brazilian ladies, there was a, I think it was German, sort of early 20s chap that they bumped into a lot and yeah mainly I liked the people that they met along the way more than the people that they were with which is a shame because then in the epilogue bit the six months or a year later I can't remember quite how long it was they don't really mention these people and I would have loved to have known what happened to those. I do have a line on my little notes here that basically gives the end of the book away and as I know I've given it to mum I am going to admit this bit but let's just say I was happy with the ending. I think the ending's very fitting. For two people that had their own issues to like deal with, the ending fits. It's what should have happened, basically. So there we go. That was Two Steps Forward by those two people that I can't pronounce the names of. So we're not going to try that again. And then the last book I read, uh, this is the one that my brother lent me. He really, really liked it. So I wanted someone else to read it and see if they did. And that is They Shoot Horses, Don't They? by Horace McCoy. It's either McCoy or McCroy. I've written McCoy, but in my head it says McCoy. M uh, whatever. Horace. It's by Horace. And this is a very thin book, hence why it didn't take me long to read. It was written in the 1930s, but you really, really can't tell. Despite the fact that the book is based in a marathon dance contest, you can't tell that this was written in the 1930s. Often with these those kind of books, there is something in it that you go, ooh, that's, that wouldn't, wouldn't work in today's society. But not with this one. The Again, there's two main characters, a female and a male. Um, I think he's called Robert. I can't remember her name. I didn't write it down because I'm stupid and obviously I don't have the book to check but anyway those two meet unexpectedly actually they meet in a very similar way to me and Pete did because when me and Pete met he intercepted a conversation that I was having with my friend who is a considerable distance from me so I used a hand gesture and then he intercepted as I did the hand gesture and then did it back and I said oh sorry I wasn't speaking to you and that's how we started talking um, and the two characters in They Shoot Horses Don't They meet in a very similar way so it was quite nice to read that because it reminded me of meeting Pete but I'm hoping me and Pete 
don't end up the same way as these two because it's not a spoiler but basically she I she's not a particularly nice person she I find her very selfish and she doesn't care that she's ruined someone else's life because she gets him to shoot her in the head and then he obviously goes or he gets the death penalty so yeah not not a great relationship but they feet in a similar way to me and Pete <laughs> but yeah he seems he's kind of naive really isn't he but to think that there wouldn't be any consequences to it but that isn't actually very much of the book. The book is mainly set around this, as I mentioned, this marathon dance contest where they they dance for, uh, it must be something like two hours and then they get like a 20 minute break or whatever. But that whole concept is crazy. They basically treat these kids, because they're very young, as animals. It's, they, they will do anything just to make a buck or two. So when they're not drawing in crowds and people aren't, you know, buying drinks or this, that and the other, tickets, they start to do these derby things, which basically means that the men have to heel toe around the ring while the woman's holding on to them. And it's the person who doesn't do enough laps that then gets booted out. So that brings in people, but then that dies down a bit. So they go, I know we'll do a public wedding and they basically just say oh kids come here you two you're gonna get married we'll give you some cash you can get divorced later it's just crazy how they treated those people um, and obviously some of the characters that are involved in that world were very interesting too so yeah I liked it it was a good book as I said it's very short um, it's only what like 150 pages but highly entertaining I liked it a lot. Possibly my favourite of the month. It'll be that or two steps forward, I don't know. But there, there we have it. So that's all for July's book wrap up and reviews and things. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of thing, I do one every month. There is a playlist, I will link it up here. Um, and another one will come out in September for August's books. Um, I don't know why I'm pointing here for August, but there we go. So yeah, feel free to subscribe for that because I do these every month um, if this is your kind of thing. And on that note, I will see you in the next one. Bye!